What's up, everybody? It is Dives Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. This is the Blue Root Pod. First things first, the Blue Root Pod can be found on iTunes and Spotify. Smash those five stars, leave a review. The Blue Root Pod can also be found on our YouTube channel, over 1,000 subs. If you're watching, make sure to hit like and subscribe below. On tap for today, the Painted Lines was at the Delaware Blue Coats Media Day today. Uh, we have a exclusive interview with Zaire Smith and Mario Shayok to discuss everything and anything Delaware Bluecoats and the Philadelphia 76ers. I was joined by Harrison Grimm and Brock Landis. Follow Brock on Twitter at Landis Brock as well as Harrison on Twitter at Harrison E. Grimm on Twitter. We got to sit down with Connor Johnson, Matt Lilly, Zaire Smith, Mario Shayok, Chris Kumaji, Doral Moore, Shiz Alston, Isaiah Miles. It was a very fun day at the 76ers Fieldhouse. Lastly, we're going to give you our top takeaways from Media Day. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome. So what we're going to do is we're kind of going to go through some serious questions and we're going to kind of go through some more fun, like kind of questions. Uh, how was your summer uh, beyond summer? What did you guys, what'd you guys do? We got to chill. <laughs> yeah, I went uh, after summer, I went back home to Canada, then went back to Philly. Well, really, just got to, got to work. Um, what was it like being drafted? You could probably chime in with this as well. It was great. I was back home in Canada with my family. Um, obviously, a special moment with my fam. Uh, getting jabbed into a great organization was really great. Um, what parts of your game do you want to see translate to the Blue Coats and how you want that to reflect up as you build up the sense? Just uh, my all around game and my offensive game. Okay. Defense. Defense? For me, I mean, just uh, showing my ability to, to score and shoot and uh, use my length defensively. Okay. Um, you guys spent the summer together and you're at the training camp with the Sixers. Are there any veterans on the Sixers that kind of took you under your wings? Yeah, I believe all of them, man. All of them, uh, them show me the ropes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, God like Tobias definitely um, helped me out since I've been here. Uh, any players like in the game right now that you kind of talk to your name off of? Yeah, I like Joe Sharp. Okay. I'm on my game like this. Guys like uh, Chris Melvin, uh, Evan Durant, guys like uh, all the shooting guards in the league that can score, definitely got to look at them. What was your opinion on social media during the special during the summer league? There was a lot of Kevin Durant comparisons. Yeah, I mean, so what was your take on that? I mean, it's crazy. He's my favorite player. Um, <laughs> obviously, I'm knowing where he's at, but um, since it's his game is something I definitely just try to just look at and prove from. Okay. Uh, so, here, um, last year on the Blue Coast, uh, we didn't really have that much role in the offense. How do you expect that to play into this season? Uh, just, them, just me, myself, just being aggressive. Okay. Yeah. Well, how, do you, how do you see your role with the Blue Coach offense this year? I'm just playing in my strength and just taking the shots within the offense and I'm just being confident. Cool. Um, so, I have some fun questions. Superheroes or food? What, what would, what's your preference? Food? Superheroes or food? Or food, yeah. Yeah. Just, just not a question. Superhero questions or food questions? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, superhero. Superhero? <laughs> no, Actually, food, food. I'll do food. You want to do food? Yeah. Right. Question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Go ahead, Zach. Yes. It's a sandwich? What about you? Yes. It is? Okay. Um, is a cereal soup? No. No? Both them? Um, if you were to put one lasagna, on top of another lasagna, would it be one lasagna or would it be two separate lasagna? One, one full lasagna? Yeah, one. <laughs> um, last thing, does a straw have one hole or two? Two. Two? Two? Well, I think that's it. First of all, uh, Zaya, I know at the beginning of the season you gave him a deal with the Sixers and kind of be in position to come up with this year. Do you feel all that pain back out here can kind of get you back on the right path? 
Yeah, it's like you're the first to come back and play, so it's a good way to work with it. Do you feel like there's any just kind of put you on the spot when I saw you sitting over there and I asked coach about your uh, your skill set and your offense and possibly being a surprise. I'm sure you heard what coach said. Do you have anything to add to that or what's your take on yourself and how do you feel like you will um, help the team out? Uh, I just got to try to play to my strength. Uh, I think I'm sure that I have the ability to score all, all ranges, all up three levels pretty efficiently. Uh, so I mean, people that don't know that yet, I think they will be surprised. And, I really want to surprise you with my defense and uh, really get to be really active and use my mind to help the team. So definitely looking forward to playing. So, so you know, what are you looking to get out of this experience here? Just uh, playing games and just working on my offense and yeah. defense, of course, just rolling on the game. How big is it to, I mean, I know you'd, ra you'd like to be up there, but how big is it to get, you know, consistent minutes here to work on that part of your game? Uh, it's huge, it's real good to do that. Right. How are you feeling? How, how are you feeling? I know that you know, you're basically trying to get that long journey to come back up to the base. Are you feeling healthy? Are you running well? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm punching good. So, uh, you know, coming into Saturday night, you know, you'll probably play about two of the toughest guys. And I think, you know, if Dozier, I think he's is still there. If Celtic, the guy who played the Celtics is now down there. Um, you did a pretty good matchup. Can you tell us about that? The game plan for him? I'm not sure, but uh, I played with him in Summer League, so I know he's good. And for, and for you, um, Mario, first off, welcome to the end meeting. How are you feeling? Okay. Tell, tell us about the experience at Iowa State and what it was like. I mean, Iowa State is great. Uh, the system kind of prepared me for this level. I played a little bit of an NBA level offense. I'm just really excited to be here. Sorry. How does it feel to be the uh, elder statesman as far as basketball-wise, so to speak? And how do you look to embrace the leadership role that may be placed upon you uh, this season? I feel uh, just, keep, uh, just giving them my knowledge that I know and still learning from them as well. Zaire, do you have any instructions from Fred for what you this year moving forward in development? I'm just playing, just showing my offensive ability. Um, I mean, they just told me just to do what I do, just, just be confident and play, play to my strengths. You know, that's, that's really what I plan on doing, just being confident and going out there and just trying to win as much as possible. So you, you said you want to work on your offensive game. Is the this, is this three-point shooting a real priority for you down here? Yes, it is open. I'm not, just, I'm not trying to force none, but it is open, yeah. For both of you guys, uh, Zaire, I know you've been a part of the same organization for a little bit, Mario, for you as well. Um, what are your guys' favorite cheesesteak spots since being in town? Oh, eat cheesesteaks. I haven't been having them yet. Mm. Interesting. All right. Mario, being um, a four-year college player, how do you think that tra helps your transition into the G League and to the NBA? As opposed to someone being, um, you know, an early um, entry. I think I just feel prepared. I feel confident. A lot more mature than I would have been, and I, mean, I just think my game's ready. Mario, what do you expect to do on offense from Blue Coast this year? Um, I mean, yeah, just playing my strengths, and I think I'm you know, going to show you guys better, I can tell you. Is that you, you were, uh, and I know a couple of people asked this, you were part of the playoff rotation last year in the postseason. I know that Coach Brown, I imagine, I think we've talked about this in the past, that I know he's still on the phone with us every other day. Um, once you decide or are able to get up to the bigs, um, what will be the, I guess, intention for you as part of that rotation? Defense, do not get outside. Help us out. How about for Ed Mario Fox? I know you're a two way guy. Once you, you know, kind of go back and forth, with, I know Norvell's not here because he's on the road trip, but when you get called up, what's your, I guess, mode of offense, defense, yeah. shooting, block shots, I guess? Um, yeah, just do what I do. I got down open shots and uh, hunt threes and just play confident offensively and defensively. Just, just be active, use my length, and uh, just blow up, blow up screens and just do, do whatever they ask. Two more.
That was Zaire Smith and Mario Shayok talking about life with the Delaware Bluecoats and everything they need to develop to join the Philadelphia 76ers. Up next, we have Chris Kumaji and Darrell Moore, uh, two seven-footers that will make sure that every home game at the 76ers Fieldhouse will be a block party. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. Philadelphia, now in Delaware. Uh, talk a little bit about your journey to, to you know, Delaware Bluecoats. Uh, it's been a long journey, uh, a little bumpy, but you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's been uh, such a great experience, you know, uh, getting to spend uh, the first uh, training camp with the six years out of college, uh, just learning a lot through the process, and uh, you know, getting better every day, and I'm excited for this uh, situation right here. Um, since, since being in Philly, have you gotten a chance to um, hit up any cheese steak places? Oh yeah, definitely. Especially when I was uh, in Center City, almost every day. What's your favorite spot? Uh, I went to uh, Gino State. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Great like fries one. too. Yeah, yeah, uh, I like that one. <laughs> who's the better rim protector, you or Joel? Yeah. <laughs> I let him. Uh, <laughs> I mean, obviously, we taller. Nah, nah, it's not about the height, man. Uh, I mean, we we both protect the rim. That's the most important. Thing. It's not about who's better. It's about when getting the team to win. That's all I got. Uh, you know, just uh, start on the defensive end, I would say, for the whole team, especially for us, uh, being, you know, the last guys, you know, on, 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 I mean, back of the defense, you know, just being vocal, getting our teammates involved, uh, just, you know, protecting the rim, like uh, the Rao said, and just, you know, being physical, being vocal, and just, you know, being easy to play with. Yeah, off of what he said, just being, you know, a force in the paint whenever we're out, you know, out there protecting the rim, getting our, you know, team good chances to, you know, score offensively, save the screens, roll to the rim, just be effective offensively, defensively, and just be, you know, as active as we can, let our force know. You and Ben Simmons played back together in 2015. What do you think has changed for you since then in 2015? No, um, definitely, yeah, I became a better player, you know, because when I first started, you know, it's just the game was too fast. I was just learning, and now it's just a, you know, completely different player from when I started. Throwing your body a little bit. Yeah, 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 that's too bad. Uh, between you, Norvell, and Darrell, um, it's going to be a block party this year. Yeah. Um, are there any wagers behind the court, behind the scenes going on, Jay? Who has more blocks this season? Uh, I mean, we haven't started yet, you know, we're just going to try to block us many shots that we can as a group, you know. <laughs> yeah, same. Just uh, block as many shots as we can, get the win. At the end of the day, it don't matter who gets the most as long as we get the win. Hey, Chris, do you, uh, do you have the chance to play for probably one of the best coaches in the country? What was the, uh, I guess, the thing that you that school that you learned about? Uh, I just learned about, you know, just coming in and working, you know, you come in in a situation as a first year or like no matter what situation, you just got to work. And uh, it, it, my coach is a defensive minded coach, so I always, you know, got us in shape and to just be ready to play defense. He's a junkie, I don't talk to guys, so you just, you know, if you can't play defense, you're not going to play, so. Darrell, you played, of course, for the great Danny Madden. What did you learn from a guy like that? Um, I learned that it's all about detail about listening and the communication. That was a big thing for him. He was a very detailed coach. He wanted you to do it the right way, and if you didn't do it right, you did it over and over until you got it right. So, but he was de definitely a good person to look up to and listen to as far as advice and you know, learning, asking questions, learning what to do, and all that. So. Hey, Chris, you uh, Talk about the city or the, the basketball, the city. Yeah, I mean uh, the only part uh, that I probably struggle with is the cold, because I'm not used to. I'm from Chad, it's super hot. Came to Florida, same weather, and you know coming here with the cold, man. I don't know. <laughs> Thank God we don't play outside, but you know <laughs> that's gonna be my biggest adjustment. Hey, Chris, you uh, you played for the Bulls, and you know 
Um, you two are going to be playing that Batman role on defense this season, uh, similar to what Norvell Pella did last year. Uh, what are your kind of goals for this year? As a, as a individually or what? Individually. Individually, uh, just, you know, just like I said, man, as, as, as a big, just being a force uh, on defense, being as vocal as we can, you know, just making an impact, you know, being like a big impact. Uh, same thing, just making an impact on the team, you know, making sure we win games and also work personally on, you know, uh, development, each other's development. And, you know, goal is we get called up to get, you know, upstairs, you know, so that's the main goal. But, of course, when it's getting many games, you know, while we're in the G League, we continue to develop the best we can. You good? Thanks, Chad. Thank you. That was Chris Kumaji and Daryl Moore. The two seven-footers will join Norvell Powell and form one of the top defensive front courts in the entire G League this season. Up next, we have versatile defender Haywood Highsmith, who is joined by some local flavor joining the Delaware Blue Coats this year, Shiz Alston of Temple University, and Isaiah Miles of St. Joe's. All right, Isaiah, uh, I, I'm going to be the lead you out of this, Haywood, because uh, obviously, you know, I have the chips. I'll talk to you, uh, obviously, all season long, but gentlemen, you, of course, played in the Big Five for four years. What does this mean to the both of you to now say that you're going to be able to represent your city? Uh, it's not really my city, but you know, well, represent the whole city. No, it's going to be fun having uh, friends and family come out and support. That's the biggest thing. How about you, Isaiah? Yeah, same for him. It's good to have that kind of support system. Uh, I went to the St. Joseph game last night, and all the fans were telling me that they're going to come show as much support as they can throughout the game. So it's definitely good to have that they. You know, support us even after we graduated and still show that love. Between the two of you, you played for two of the best coaches maybe ever in college basketball, Phil Martelli and Fran Duffy, Fran Duffy respectively. What type of an impact did they have on the both of you? Uh, just, you know, he made me a better man first and foremost. Uh, I think that was what he shot to do, just make me a better person and I think he achieved that. How about Phil? Uh, same. Uh, just he's helped me kind of reach that level of potential that I couldn't really tap into. Uh, you know, you hear all this, the read all, read all the articles and stories about when I was most improved my senior year, and that kind of I kind of handed out to him because you know, he told me all the time that he sees me a certain way, he holds me towards a certain expectation, and you know, I, I reached that to kind of uh, accommodate him. So I definitely thank him for you know, allowing me to tap into that. Uh, I'm also a Temple guy. Uh, I was wondering if you caught the game last night and uh, if you can comment what you think about Coach McKee. Uh, yeah, I was at the game last night and uh, you know, I think they're going to be a good team. Uh, Coach McKee has a lot of pro experience, so he's going to provide a uh, pro aspect to the uh, team. I think they're going to be uh, real good. I think McKee's a player's coach, so he's going to get a lot of recruits and he's going to be good for them. Hey, uh, what, how, how happy is it to be coming home for your second straight year here uh, with the Blue Coats? Um, I'm excited. I say, what is training camp been like? And how competitive has it been down there? Uh, it's competitive, uh, just like how I was at the six. You know, dudes are ready to play, dudes are hungry, and dudes got, they want to prove a lot to the coaches, not only to for the Delaware coaches, but to the Sixers, you know, scouts and scouts and coaches. So it's competitive. You know, we fight every day. Uh, we play every day because we don't know, you know, nothing guaranteed. So we kind of plan for our minutes, plan for our spots, and plan for the opportunity. We all kind of want to reach the same goal as what Hayward said, getting that call up or being able to get to our overall dream and get to that big stage. So, I mean, we're all going to try to get there, uh, try to get there as much as we can. You know, not selfishly. You know, we don't have a selfish team, but, you know, we are hungry. You know, all of us want to try to achieve, like, achieve our dream. Hey, how was your uh, overall experience with the G League League team? Oh, that was a fun experience going overseas, representing the G League. Um, played a couple of you know, overseas teams, played some guys like Ray Monroe. Um, I forgot who else was on our team. But, you know, just some nice experience teams with us. That was a pretty fun experience for me. First time in the South America, so you know, it was pretty fun. You know, hey, were you able to be up with the Sixers last year? You were in the uh, application, or did you get the type of experience? I should say. 
You know what I mean? Being up there, you know, it's a different, you know, different level, but, you know, more aggressive, more physicality, bigger guys. But um, just being up there, you know, it helps me see what I got to do to, you know, make my way up there full time, like I said. But, um, you know, I definitely, you know, that definitely helped me being up there last year with them guys. You know, getting, this, getting knowledge from guys like Jimmy Butler, Tobias, Ben, Joel, you know, and then Shake every now and then too, because Shake is there now. So it's like, you know, it's very helpful for me. Do you keep in touch with Shake? Yeah, me and Shake are very cool. You know, we um, talk every now and then. I heard he got injured, you know, I made sure he was good. So, you know, he's good. So. How is uh, how is Zaire looking these days uh, for the three of you? I mean, you know, he just he just came up a few moments ago, and I mean, he admitted that he looks like he's in very good health and uh, he's moving very well. Uh, but while he's here on this rehab, what are you what are you expecting out of him? Um, kind of don't expect anything too much of him. You know, he, he kind of is where we all achieve the beat. So, you know, him using that that knowledge that he may maybe learn from a few of his teammates from the Sixers or just his knowledge from playing because he played an NBA game. So kind of using that knowledge to help us, uh, you know, help us get better. Uh, I mean, he looks good. I mean, he just dumped on our seven footers a day. So, I mean, he, look, he, look, he looks pretty healthy to me. He looks pretty good to me. He a freak athlete, he can jump out the gym. Most athletic dude. I mean, I've seen. So, I mean, I, th I think he looks good. I thought you were the most athletic I've ever seen. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely more athletic than I am. For Isaiah and Shiz, this is Dwayne Sportsback Radio. You guys both played in the city in the Big Five, like Big mentioned earlier. So, I'm sure you had some battles together against each other. How do you think um, those battles will help you guys come together and help out the new coach this season? Uh, you know, I played against Isaiah my freshman year. Uh, when he was at St. Joe's, and I think that was his the year he got most improved. So he, you know, had a good game versus. And every game in the Big Five, you uh, is battle tested. It's, it's a war. So we bring that mentality here every night. I think we'll be very successful. Just the hungry dog mentality and just uh, going to war every night. Well, hey, when you were the defensive leader of the Blue Coats last year, uh, between Norvell, yourself, Zaire, uh, talk a little bit about the defensive poten potential of this year's roster. Yeah, I mean, I think we can be the best defensive team in the G League. Flat out like that. I mean, we got guys from the guard, guys from block shots, guys everywhere. You know, you got Chris, Norvell, like you said, Norvell's probably the best shot blocker in the G League. Like, seriously. And um, Z, he's a great home ball defender. And, you know, we also got... Uh, we also got other defenders, you know, it's underrated as well. Like, Shiz is a great defender, guys. Yeah, he's a good defender. Like, some of the guys don't even know about we can defend as well. So, I mean, I'm so excited. I think we can be the best defensive team, team we're going to be honest with you. What's each of your three favorite G State spots? <laughs> I forgot what mine was called. Mine is uh, Del Sandro. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, what mine yeah. was. That's my favorite one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask my favorite was kind of. Two good spots. Hey, look. Uh, we spoke briefly downstairs uh -huh. and just walk us through being down here in the G League and being in the NBA, how that fuels your passion to succeed to get back to the NBA and how you use that as a leader amongst these guys here in the G League. Yeah, I mean, I feel like me coming from where I came from, you know, the journeys that I took last year was pretty amazing for me. Coming from Division II school, nobody know about me, you know, being Division II player of the year, guys, you know, not really looking at me as like a G League type player, a type player. And me getting here somehow, some way, really was, you know, very, you know, humbling and just a blessing for me. And, you know, then again, that two-way was very, very humbling and blessing as well. So, I mean, I just try to, you know, use that as, you know, feel being back down here, you know, grinding it all in the G League, you know, working to get back up there full time, like I said. You know, definitely I'm trying to take on the bigger role as a leader this year for his teams. I know the offense, I know the defense, and I know what the coaches want out of us. Shiz, we've had this discussion. I think we talked about it about a week ago when I came here uh, to training camp. Uh, starting at Haverford, going to Temple, playing for Dumpf, and now here you are again playing for your, uh, the, well, again, I know it's not the hometown, but it is your home team. What is the feeling going to be like for you on November 9th? Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Like I said, just just happy to be around friends and family uh, to come and support me. That's everything to me, my, my family. So just uh, having them around for another year, you know, coming to see me play just means everything. So be excited, man. Just, just ready to, uh, you know, put on for the scene like I always have. One more. Ready? How, how bad are you guys looking forward to starting the season 
Uh, I know you've been in training camp for a while. You've been playing, playing against each other. How is it going to feel to actually go up against some other competition for a change? Good. Real good. I'm mean, tired of seeing you playing against these dudes every day. I ain't going. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired, I'm tired, tired of going, going out play. Yeah. So, <laughs> nah, it's definitely exciting. I definitely want to see how we match up against other teams. You know, we've been working hard and being competitive with each other, but I'm excited to see how we match up with, you know, more competitive teams and other teams. That was Haywood Highsmith. No matter what, you put Haywood Highsmith in a room, he's going to make everyone smile. Up next, we have Connor Johnson, head coach of the Delaware Blue Coats. Hope you enjoy. How do you measure success this year, Connor? Um, I think for us, we've been pretty clear all along about our goals and kind of what that means for our team. And the first part being developing the guys. Um, who can come in and then later have an impact with the Sixers. And I think that'll always be what we come back to at the end of the year. Did we help those guys get better? Did they take the next step in their careers with the Sixers, without, wherever that may be? I think that'll always be what we come back to kind of as our number one thing that's important. Coach, a lot of eyes being up here. I'm excited. 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 Um, this summer on the Summer League team, I think, as you know, the Sixer roster being as strong and competitive competitive as it is, it's tough for him that he hasn't really broken through to kind of get those minutes yet. So he'll be here starting the season with us. And the plan is just to continue him on this progression. Coming back from injury, got some good reps this summer, and continue to grow him as a defender, as a perimeter player that can knock down open shots and make plays off the dribble and kind of take the next step in his offensive game while still ramping him up from a defensive perspective. I think he's looked great so far kind of through our training camp. He sets the tone for us defensively. I'm a huge Zaire fan. I'm happy to have him back. I'm happy to help him kind of take the next step. So it works nicely for us. Do you, do you see a difference with him uh, from the summer league now? Do you feel like he just kind of made Yeah, I think his confidence grows every day. I think I thought the summer was a big jump from where we had him last year when he was with us in Delaware. And I think we're still seeing that here. I think he shoots it with more confidence. I think he shoots it comfortably. He's looked good shooting it out here. Um, but but it, I'm, I always kind of really am, am impressed by his defensive presence and the way that he can get up and guard the ball. And I think that's going to be an asset for us in the G League. But I think that can really be something that helps the Sixers down the line in the future. Coach, last year you had the benefit of Shake Love, you the point guard, and you ran a lot of pick and roll with him. Is there a front runner at that position this season? And if not, how do you see that position on that? Yeah, I think uh, no, Shake was great for us. No question. I'm really happy to see his success. As you guys know, bummed to see him out with the knee for a little bit, but he was playing well, earning more minutes. And, and that, to me, makes me kind of says a lot about what we did here, put him in positions to succeed, succeed when he's there. For our point guard, Mumford will probably get most of the minutes and, and start for us as the point guard. Um, he's a talented player as well, kind of a little different mold than Shake, who's more really scores it, I think. I think what we helped, helped Shake was he could score to begin with. But by playing the point for us, he got to kind of add another something to his game. Make the right plays when he gets in the paint. Make the right passes out of pick and roll. Mumford's a little bit different, uh, a little more experienced. Playing the G League has had some G League success, but we'll be running a lot of the similar things to what we did last year. A lot of pick and roll, trying to play fast, get the ball up the court, so guys like Zaire, Mariel can get the ball in transition, look and score. And then our, our roster, again, I think has a lot of shooting. I think Matt does a really good job getting us high character players who can shoot and now we're trying to get them to fit in that offensive system that we have. And for a guy like Xavier who's played in Spain, played in China, how beneficial is that experience coming into um, your organization? I think it's good. I think we talk about him, we try and develop all of our players. When we get someone like Xavier, it's a little bit different. We want to develop, but we also kind of want to showcase. So it's, the goals are a little twofold in that way where he's done a lot of he's had a lot of success he's had some nba minutes he's played like you said overseas so part of it is uh, what can he get better at where is his weaknesses where are the strengths we want to capitalize on on the second side is what can we do to show people that he can be a great defender he can be a great on ball defender fighting through pick and rolls he can be a great distributor as at the point guard position so most guys we get younger guys it's we got to develop we get guys like him guys that have been around the block a little bit washburn's another one what can we do to showcase them, and what can we do to them? Coach, on that, Al Horford is a veteran presence in the Sixers locker room. He mentioned John Hicks. Could he be a mentor for these young kids coming in the locker room? Mumford. 
Is that you asking about? Yes. Yeah, I think I, one of the things I think the Sixers prioritize, and we've done a good job, Matt really, he chooses the players, prioritizing here, is high character guys. And I've been very impressed. I thought last year we had a really good group going in and hope, hope, hope that wasn't a fluke. Now here we're in year two. Seems like we have another high character group who shows up to practice every day, sets the tone for what we want to do, um, treats each other with respect and comes in like professionals. And I think for us, that makes it easier. That also sets up a great environment for our younger players, the Zaire type, to come in and see this kind of strong culture that's present and then continue to build up for that. Uh, what, what, what do you see for Shiz Austin? And is he able to, to play either guard spot for you? Yeah, I was really impressed watching Shiz, uh, watching his film coming in. We had him in a pre-draft workout in Philadelphia. Most, he scored a lot and he shot really high percentages. And so that's like, there we go, that's a great start. But he also had pretty high assist numbers. And so as we move forward to see where he fits in with us, I think he could play as the point guard. I think that's his, for him to play at the highest level he can achieve, it's probably gonna be as a point guard. And so those are the sort of skills we wanted to develop with him. And I'm, ex I'm excited to have him. He shot 90% from the foul line, had five plus assists at Temple while taking most of the offensive burden. And that's a heck of a resume for us to kind of get, get over here. The motto during Pluto's camp was uh, run, share, defend. Defend, run, defend, share, defend, in run, that share. order, no problem. Um, Hopefully which, the players know it in that order. Which player in NBA history kind of is a model of that philosophy? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, when, we, when we set out of what we're trying to do here, it's about developing these guys. And so what are the skills that, no matter where they go, definitely with the Sixers, but anywhere else, that translate right away? And no coach is going to look at these guys and be, oh, that guy defends too hard. Oh, that guy runs the floor too hard. Oh, that guy's too willing to be a good teammate. Those skills, no matter where they play, are gonna translate. And so within the Sixers umbrella, those are the three things we've decided that can kind of take one guy to the next level. So who, as a player, embodies all three? I'm not sure, but we want guys that pressure on the perimeter. We got rim protection behind them. We want guys that run the floor. And guys that are willing to share the ball, kick it ahead. So we've kind of prioritized those three things. I think we have a roster that fits it. Now it's about implementing it and seeing what it looks like going forward. Last one, yeah. Cool. Kyle, nice to see you. Boys first, Dwayne next. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Connor, great to uh, talk with you. First of all, thank you again for calling on the Voice of Reason Live. No problem. Night. Happy to be on the Voice of Reason. Oh, I love that. That sarcasm is definitely. First of all, congratulations. Welcome back to basketball. When you were presented today, or I should say the mayor of Wilmington, Mike Brzezicki, presented you uh, with the proclamation, what, what does this mean for a team like this Luka team? Because now you will be playing in your first full season here in the field house. I think it's great. I think there's a lot of excitement uh, around our team. I'm personally pretty excited about our team too, from a basketball perspective, but then to see how the community is kind of embracing the team here on a full-time basis. And then just to see the resources now that our players get to use every day, having the locker room, having the weight, having the training room, where anything they need to help them develop and become the best version of themselves they can be, they have here. And so it's great to be part of the community. I'm excited for our first full season. And can't wait to get really playing. Last one with Dwayne. Coach, uh, Dwayne Gaines, the Sports Red Radio. So we've all been seeing that Matisse Dybul for the Sixers is looking like a steal or a surprise, if you will. Do you think you will have that? Do you think Mario will have the same kind of effect for you guys here in Delaware? Yes, I'm very uh, optimistic and excited. I think his ability to score kind of sets the tone right away for what he can do. In a lot of different ways, he can shoot. From the perimeter, he can shoot from the mid-range, he can score at the rim. I think he'll be very difficult. I look for him to a very successful offensive season. I think he's a better defender than people give him credit for. We're really, as part of our defensive philosophy, being physical and aggressive, I think we will help him kind of understanding that mindset. But to your point, I think he should have a very successful offensive season. I think he should kind of turn a lot of heads with the way that he can score, the way he can shoot. And I, and I'm optimistic that he could kind of be a long-term piece for the Sixers going forward. All right, that was head coach Connor Johnson talking to the media. Up next, we have general manager Matt Lilly talking about everything Delaware Blue Coats from Zaire Smith, Mario Shayok, the point guard situation, into the overall improvement of the G League moving forward. Uh, Matt, uh, lessons from last season have you informed you to construct this year's roster? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I, I think you look at our team last year, we, we were pretty good on the offensive end. 
um, and probably not quite as good defensively as we wanted to be. I think that was a big priority for us coming into this year is to be um, just you know more versatile, uh, bigger, longer, more athletic on the defensive end. So I, I think we, we feel pretty good about the group we've put together on, on that end. And, uh, I think we're still going to be pretty good offensively. I think that's that's probably the biggest thing from last year to this year is a, a, a prioritization of defense. Um, what, what did you like about Shiz Austin and Brandon? Yeah, um, obviously a local kid. We've we've had an opportunity to, to have our eyes on him for the last four years um, at, at Temple. So I, I think with Shiz, it's it's a combination of his his size at the guard position is intriguing. Uh, I think his shooting is going to allow him to play on the ball, off the ball. I think he's going to bring some versatility there. Um, and I think it's honestly the whole package. We, we we like the character, the personality. I think there's a lot to like about Shiz. We're excited to kind of get him get him in our program for his rookie year and, and see what we can do with him. In terms of Zaire, do you have any instructions from the Sixers on how they want him to develop his Um yeah, I think it's a number of things that we're going to look to, to work on with Z. It's he, he's still super young, right? He's he's two years younger than anybody on the Sixers roster. He's two years younger than anybody on the Blue Coats roster. So uh, I, I think we see him as 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 a long term guy that's going to be an NBA contributor. So uh, it's just reps as a as a guard and, and reading and reacting and making decisions. And um, I think there's a couple of things that we're going to prioritize with him. But more than anything else, we just want to get him reps doing a bunch of different things. Hey, but carrying this roster to the Sixers roster, you guys have a lot of perimeter wing defenders. You can space the floor, you can play good defense, but you may lack a true facilitator. Sure. How do you think the point guard position is going to play out because of the loss of Shake knowing you need a true point guard to step up? How do you think that position plays out? Yeah, I think we, we feel pretty good about the guys we got here, Xavier Munford and, and Shiz Alston. Um, I think both of those guys, Munford in particular, has got a track record of being a pretty good player at this level with uh, a number of years in the G League experience with, with USA Basketball, NBA, uh, high level overseas. Like he, He's got a pretty good track record as a pro. We're excited to uh, to get him in that position and see what he can do. And, and Shiz, I touched on it already, I think as a rookie, we're, we're uh, pleased to have him kind of in that role as well. Matt, how are you? Jake Schwartz, what's the reason? How you doing? Good, how are you? Good to see you as always. And uh, first of all, uh, you know, we're here second year, the first full season here in this beautiful uh, 275,000, I believe, square foot facility. Uh, you were uh, recognized today by the mayor of Wilmington. What does this mean to this organization? I know we had this conversation at one of the open tryouts yeah. about you've been pretty much a part of this right from the beginning. How far along would you say this program has come for you, you know, just the team in general? For sure. I, I think the, the G League itself and our program specifically, I think, is, has come a long way uh, from when I first started. It's just uh, from a resource investment perspective, it's um, it's something we prioritize, and I think we're pretty happy with kind of where we've landed. But this this building specifically has been a long time coming, something we've been talking about for years. So to finally be here, day one, training camp, media day, and, and have a place that's our home, we, we couldn't be more thrilled. Tell us about, uh, you know, I, I overheard a couple of names, Shiz Alston, and then of course you got your two way players, Norvell and uh, uh, you know, Mario. Uh, what are we expecting in terms of, uh, I guess, performance-wise, I guess, are they mostly just going to keep going, just kind of going back between the Sixers and down here? The two-way guys? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, Varel obviously isn't here today because he's, he's out on the road trip with, with the Sixers, he's so um, I, I think that's the idea for both those guys. It's the nature of the two-way contracts. They'll, they'll split time between, between the two teams. Um, that will be driven by a number of things, necessity at, at, at the Sixers level and opportunity at the Blue Coast level, depending on what our schedule looks like. But um, those guys will be bouncing back and forth for sure, and we're, we're excited to get to work with both of them down here. How excited are you this, this Saturday night uh, against the Red Cross? Yeah, uh, I mentioned just being able to kind of start the season here at the Fieldhouse as our home base, and I think to, to open up at home is a great opportunity for us to get some people in the building and, and show what the team can do. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, Matt, David Fenster, the fifth yeah. quarter. Um, I understand that you guys had an open trial. And going back to the first um, question about reconstructing the roster, I I'm unaware of the status of my uh, trial with the team, and sure. I was wondering if I made the team or not, because I, I didn't see a jersey for me, sure. but I'm here at media day, and I was just wondering your thoughts on that. So for right now, don't have a roster spot for you, but we'll, we'll see how things change over the season. We'll keep you in mind, okay? <laughs> Thank you. 
you look around the NBA and you see Kendrick Nunn. Yeah. Uh, he played last year with the Santa Cruz Warriors. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean for the G League as a whole? Uh, just moving forward as a team. Yeah, uh, I, I think the success stories grow and grow each year, right? Whether it's uh, Hassan Whiteside, Jonathan Simmons, whoever. Like they're, um, the G League, I think, has proven at this point that it can be a launching pad for for long and meaningful NBA careers. Um, and, and you know, I think those stories will, will keep coming, and, and hopefully, hopefully, some guys in our mix here will, will be one of them. But um, you know, I, I think the league has done a great job of. Um, creating infrastructure where guys can, can play in the G League and get better and, and be prepared for, for the NBA opportunity. How much do you think that the G League helped Thurkin work with us? You know, he, he was up and down, you know, he got, got some pretty good minutes. How, how much do you think that, that, that kind of helped him? Yeah, um, so Ferk, Ferk wasn't here for, I wouldn't say it was a, a terribly long stint in Delaware, but he did get some, some time with us and got some reps. Um, I, I think for for any NBA player, just given the, an NBA team's practice schedule and, and, and game schedule, there's not that many opportunities to play live five on five basketball if you're not in the rotation. So I, I think that's part of the reason we're here, right? Is for uh, to, provide, to provide provide a place for for players to come down and, and, and have that experience of, of live game reps in a five on five setting. So uh, I, I think for uh, you know, we've been happy for kind of the success he's had over the last couple of weeks, especially the game winner the other night. Um, but I, I think that's. You know, that's an opportunity for a number of guys where if they're not in the rotation, this, this is a viable place to come down and get some reps. Yeah, Coach Kafer did talk about the NBA potentially expanding and having a draft that would see the G League also be able to get two rounds worth of players. What do you think this means for better and the G League? Um, yeah, I, I think just the, the, the way the league has grown. Uh, from the, at the NBA perspective, I think teams are, are, are like I said, more invested. In it. I think they're still figuring out what the best use of it is. The two-way contracts are kind of the newest mechanism, and then the Exhibit Tens kind of came along with that. So uh, I don't know what those conversations are looking like at, at the league level. We're talking about third round, fourth round, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I, I do think it's, it's something that the G League is here to stay, and uh, the NBA at the league level is going to kind of figure out the best way to, to utilize it. What are your thoughts on the new free throw rule being implemented this season? Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, no one's ever done it, right? So I, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know if we know what all the ramifications are going to be. I think the idea is to speed the game up, and I, I'd imagine we're going to accomplish that. Um, I just don't know. Uh, it's going to be new for everyone. So it'll be a learning experience. I'm excited to see what this, this first month or two look like with the new rule. Um, and maybe we'll have some, some a better answer for you down the road. Okay. Hey guys, it is Dives again. Uh, Blue Coats Media Day just ended. We're going to give you our top takeaways. Uh, my first top takeaway of Media Day has to be the similarities still remain between the Blue Coats and the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, defend, run, share was a theme that was heavily discussed between Matt Lilly, Connor Johnson, Zaire Smith, Norvell Pell, um, Miles Shayok, you name it. Uh, we heard it. Uh, deflections, uh, interrupting the passing lanes. It was pretty um, all over the place. Harrison, what was your main takeaway of Delaware Blue Coats Media Day? I think I think there's a lot to take away uh, from today. It seems like the Blue Coats are very intent on uh, mirroring the Sixers, even down to roster construction. I found it kind of funny that um, they're basically going to run this team without a true point guard, whether or not they say it. Uh, you know, it's a lot of big bodies, a lot of athletic defenders. Um, the Blue Coats definitely put together a good roster. Um, I'm interested to see how they use Zaire down here, um, whether or not he'll be an offensive focal point. My guess would be probably. Uh, I think Mariel Shayok is a, is a great piece for them. And, uh, yeah, they definitely have a lot to look forward to down here. The biggest takeaway was Xavier Munford will be the starting point guard of the Delaware Blue Coats. Like Harrison said, I'm definitely a little nervous about how that looks in terms of facilitating the pick and roll, involving Norvell Pell, rolling to the basket, alley oops. I think that's a little bit of, of a concern. Brock, what was your kind of some of your takeaways of Media Day? Similar to Harrison, I think the construction of this roster is predicated upon tough defense. And Deebs, you said it. Run, share, defend. And Connor Johnson corrected you and said, nope, defend first. That's the most important. So this team is going to defend. They're going to defend around the perimeter. They're going to block passing lanes, rotate very well, hedge screens well, which is what the Sixers are doing. 
and they're going to pray that their point guard can facilitate nearly as well as how Shake Milton did last season. I think they do have very capable, able-bodied shooters, though. Harris, Shake Milton, not here anymore. She's also a guy that can step up in his role, Shayok. I think they do have very capable shooters as well. Um, one of my favorite moments of Blue Coats Media Day was the, the last panel was Shiz Alston, Isaiah Miles, and Haywood Highsmith. And especially that kind of rivalry between St. Joe's and Temple of Shiz and Isaiah. Um, they spoke a lot, of it, a lot about the Big Five, um, but I like the comment from Haywood Highsmith that this has the potential to be one of the best defensive rosters in the entire G League. Uh, Harrison, any other takeaways of Blue Coats Media Day? Um... I, I just think that, that going into this season, it's, it's going to be different for them. Um, you know, they finally have a place to settle down uh, in the field house for an entire year. And I think that's going to really help out this team uh, with the season especially is, is just being familiar um, in, in a spot because last year they were really everywhere, you know, in terms of moving into here and, and even before that. Uh, I think Connor Johnson, he seemed really excited about this team, and I think he has a good reason to be excited about this team. I think they put together a good roster. Um, I thought it was really interesting when Jared Brownridge's main takeaway about having a place to play, having a home to play, was that he has a, a weight room right next to the gym. That was pretty interesting. Uh, Brock, any last comments? A lot of these guys look muscular, and for Philadelphia, they're implementing a new training regimen, and they brought on a couple of training people here that were catering their own company. So I think in Philadelphia – with good defense comes muscles, and they're trying to bulk these players up. They even have Chipotle catering the event, and I want to talk to some of the higher-ups at TPL, see if we could get some Chipotle catering for an event. Uh, but nonetheless, this team looks athletic. They run, and they alluded to it in practice. They have a war dog mentality, and every night they're going to be competing like war dogs, and if you do that, you're going to fare well in the G League. Uh, let's talk about predictions for the season. Um, I'm going to like talk briefly about Zaire. Um, I'm a little nervous that he's not going to be that much involved in this offense. I got to be honest. Um, my first takeaway is he's, he, he, he's going to take the shots if he's open, but I'm a little nervous that he's going to be a little too hesitant. Um, I want the ball running through Zaire, not Mario. I could be wrong. Uh, what's another prediction? Go ahead, Harrison. Um, I, I think what, what you said just made a lot of sense, and I think whether it's how Zaire views himself or, or how the team views Zaire, um, might be that role player role, you know, not the go-to guy. They don't want him to be the go-to guy down here because he's obviously not going to be the go-to guy with the Sixers. Uh, my prediction is Mario Shayok is going to be this team's leading scorer and, and the main playmaker and facilitator um, and number one option just overall. You know, I think he has a scores mentality. We saw it in G League. The dude can score. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he'll develop with this team as the season progresses. Uh, go ahead, Brock. Uh, yeah, he's definitely still a work in progress. He's 20 years old, and this work in progress is in its infancy. So I would like the offense to run through him, but I think due to both passiveness and the coaching, it may not at first. Shayok is a guy who I really like and I think can really blossom into a score at all three levels, which he talked about. And I can see him potentially finding his way onto the Sixers roster by the end of the season. I think expectations are high for Highsmith as a leader, and it seems like he has full command over this roster. They all seem very receptive to what he's saying, and I'm excited to see what happens with Zaire Smith. Still a work in progress, though. Uh, who do you think he dunked on during practice today? Because I was. They, they, they said our seven footer, and they have two of them. <laughs> One of them's seven seven, and the other's around seven. So, uh, what do you guys think? Zaire has enough bounce to dunk on a seven foot seven center, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if they're referring to someone as the seven footer, I'm going to take a guess it was Chris. And if he really did dunk on him, even if it's practice, that's incredibly impressive because Chris is a big human being. Uh, when asked uh, during one of the interviews today, uh, Haywood Highsmith was asked about uh, how Zaire Smith has looked so far during camp. And that was one of the comments that apparently Zaire Smith looks so good that he dunked over a seven footer today. Um, another main takeaway I have, uh, staying on the big man, um, Doral Moore, and Chris Kumaji, those are huge human beings. And you look at Norval Pell, um, it's just incredible to think about how good that rim protection could be this season when they're rotating Chris, Norvell, and uh, Doral Moore. So that, that could be something very special. Um, defense, 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 man. Defense wins in the G League. Uh, that was the kind of the, the biggest kind of takeaway. Um, for Chris, I am Mr. Crockpot. For Harrison, follow him on Twitter, at Harrison E. Grimm. And for Brock, 
That is at Landis Brock. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome.